Kincaid, thank you for trusting Ryan. Of a guy you really didn't even know too much about. <laughs> Ryan, I appreciate you. I love you. We was um, Bible college buddies for a while. I like to say when he left, I really got sanctified. So, <laughs> Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. My beautiful wife is with me. Praise God. Come on now, y'all. I'm taking, taking. <laughs> I told you my special guest is here, Philip. <laughs> but y'all, honestly, I'm so excited. My name is Daryl Ingram Jr. For y'all who don't know me, um, I'm just an evangelist who loves Jesus. Um, simple. I just love Jesus. Uh, me and my wife, we, we go around the world and we just do like gospel festivals, just getting the lost to come to the Lord um, and equipping the church to go out and just share their faith. And we've been blessed to do it in Africa and all places over the United States and I'm just excited of what God is doing everywhere, all the time. I, I see his spirit's the same. If I'm cross seas or I'm at home in America, the spirit of God is the same. Um, in every language, the Holy Spirit comes and he moves. So I'm excited for what he's going to do here tonight. I want you all to really open up your hearts and really come um, expecting something from God. Every time the church, the body of Christ gather, God wants to do something. Every single time. So tonight, let's, let's get our hearts prepared and ready to see what God wants to do in your heart and your life. Say amen. amen. Today, I want to turn our Bibles to Joshua. Um, Joshua chapter 24. Of course, being the guy I am, I'm an evangelist. I love Joshua. He's always going to take land for people, take land for Jesus. <laughs> so I see Joshua and I get excited like this is the guy. We're in a very unique um, passage of scripture here because when we see Joshua here he's now an old man um, and if you know anything about Joshua even if you don't Joshua is the successor of Moses so he's like the next guy behind Moses and Joshua has done so many things um, Joshua he's seen the move of God this Joshua we're about to see what he's reading he's seen the blessing and the curse of God uh, he's seen the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He's seen the manna of bread. Just Joshua, he's seen so many things. I, I'm sure he could remember when, when God had gave the people the law. He, he could remember seeing Moses go up for 40 days and 40 nights. He's he known God. He's he seen God do things that honestly we even haven't seen. He's seen how, how when the people was going against Moses and the ground was split in half and people fell into hell. Just Joshua has seen so many things. He's seen when Miriam came against Moses and she was struck with leprosy. Like this Joshua who's about to speak here, he's seen it all. He was the guy that led the people of Israel to see the Jericho walls fall down. <laughs> he's seen the prostitute Rahab get saved from dying like the rest of them. He had seen so much and more than anything. I love this verse because I always wondered. Why Joshua was the successor of Moses out of all people? And I think in Exodus, it sums it up. Exodus 33, 11, it says this. It said, thus says the Lord, used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. So this Joshua, he, would, he know, he's just didn't just see all of these things, but he was a man of the presence of God. That tent symbolized the presence. He never left the presence of God. He was a man that loved Jesus. He was a man that loved the Lord God Almighty. And now he's at the end of his life, and he's about to give one last word to his people. So a guy like this, I want to know what he has to say. I don't know if you know, but... I mean, for me, if someone in my family is about to die, they're really important. Everybody wants to know what do they have to say. The last words. You want to spend the last moments of the, your, their life with you. You want to spend it with them. And Joshua 24, verse 14. This is what Joshua tells the people. He says, now, therefore, fear the Lord. Everyone say, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. He says this, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, 
Choose this day whom you will serve. Someone say choose. choose. What are the God, gods your father served in the region beyond the river? Are the gods of the Amorites whose land you dwell? But he says this statement, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God, thank you right now for your word. Thank you for what you're about to do, God. I pray that our eyes be open to see Jesus more than anything else, God. Let us leave this place with a picture of the one who has fire in his eyes. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. amen. Reading this verse, it shocked me so much. Because all of the things that I told you that Joshua seen, the people who he's telling seen the same things. And at the end of his life, he's, he's telling these people, it's time for you to make a decision. He's approaching these people and he said, hey, choose this day whom you will serve. And when I look over America, when I look over us as a church, I see the temptation to, to flirt with sin, to flirt with the devil, and also say we're Christians. I see it everywhere I go. I, I see the temptation to come into this Christianity I like to say Western Christianity of lukewarmness. And I see it's not a new thing, but it was things from generations on. It was always a temptation to, to flirt with sin and flirt with righteousness. It, it was always this thing that, yes, I want to serve God and I want his benefits, but I also want to dip and dabble in everything else. And Joshua he was telling the people that seen all of these wonderful things. He was coming to them and he said, hey, I just want to warn you before I die, you need to make a choice. And he didn't just say make a choice, but he said, this day you need to choose. It's an urgency in this gospel. It's an urgency in this message. I look up statistics, so you know 160,000 people die each and every day. Never felt 160. Every day. It's an urgency. And Joshua said, hey, choose this day whom you're going to serve. He told them, fear the Lord. Oh, how have we lost the fear of God? Oh, how? And I'm not talking about people outside of the church. I'm talking inside of the church. I'm talking you and I. How much have we lost a fear of him, uh, an awareness that this God, we are naked and exposed before him. I was talking the other day and praying with a woman who's like a mom in a faith with me. And I said, you know what's crazy? I feel, I feel so much in my heart that the devil fears him more than we do. He trembles. We don't even do that. He said, fear the Lord. God is still God. He's still holy. I, I don't really care if it's popular. I, I, I say he's holy. And he requires a life lived unto him in worship. And worship, though what just happened was so beautiful, worship is a lifestyle of obedience to God. Because of what he done for me, because he bled and he shed his blood for me because of that, not no other thing, not because I want to earn my way, but oh, you've been so good. And because you've been so good, I choose to fear you. I, I choose to humble myself before the almighty hand of God. I, I, I choose to say, you know what? This is coming my way and it's tempting me, but God, you're good to me. He said, fear him. Fear him. He's all, the, the Bible says he ponders the ways of the evil. His eyes are everywhere. I remember talking to this guy one time. He said, man, one day I was scrolling on my Instagram, and if anybody have social media, you're going to understand this story. He said, I'm, I'm scrolling through, and I seen something that I shouldn't have seen, but honestly, it looked it good to my flesh. He said, so I scrolled past, I was like, ah. But then he said, part of me was like, ah, let me go back, I want to see. But he said, I had a mirror right behind me, and my dad was right next to me, so I wanted to make sure that he couldn't see me. 
But he said, as soon as I start doing it, I heard the Lord say, but I see you. And you see, we can fool our pastors, we can fool other church members, but we can't fool God. Do you know a book is written of your life? I, I wonder today if the books were open today and you can see your life. I wonder what you would say. I remember before I came to Christ, uh, how foolish I was to think I was getting away with the things I was getting away with. <laughs> I stole out of stores, and though I got away, I thought I really was getting away, but I was accountable to a God I couldn't see. <laughs> I lied and cheated and deceived so much, and though I got away with it with people, he always saw. Joshua goes on, he says, serve the Lord in sincerity and faithfulness. Serve him with a, a real love and a real passion. You know, it's more than a Sunday church service. If the only time we spend with God is on a Sunday morning, I challenge you today to serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. The Lord has been dealing with me so much about these things. Because you know, as you walk with God and you, you get a care for God and things like that, it's easy to hide things on the outside that's actually even dwelling in your heart. And I'm getting to the point where I'm like, God, God, will you mold and prune me so much within that God, even my inner being is pleasing to you. God, in the places that only you see, God, can I, can I look like Jesus? In, in the places that my wife will no longer see, in my thoughts, in my heart, God, can I be pure before you, Jesus? God, I, I understand in my, con in my position I'm righteous today. So I, it's not like I'm trying to work, but God, I just want to look like you. I, I, I really want to be like Jesus. Joshua was telling the people, hey, Serve him in faithfulness and sincerity. Is that your heart today? Do you really, really, with all your core being, want to look like the king? I'm telling you, he's watching today. And he's looking for hearts that are serve him. I've been reading in Matthew, and if you read the Gospels, you know one thing. Jesus don't play with the Pharisees. <laughs> Man, he, he told them something I was reading the other day. I said, whoa. He said, you clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is, you know, it's dirty, you know. He, he goes on and he said, not only that, like, you are whitewashed tombs. Man. Whitewashed tombs. You, on the outside, you look great, but on the inside, you're full of dead bones. I said, whoa. And, and as I read the scripture, you know, the scripture is like a mirror. I begin to look in my heart. I said, God. God, will you burn in me again? Oh, I need a fire from God. Oh, I need him to come and consume me again. I want to serve him like I've never served him before. You know, the, the challenge with us who've been walking with God for a little while is this. As time go on, we, not, we don't look like when we first started. Oh, when we first said yes, when we were serving him faithful and sincerity. Oh, when we couldn't wait to get in church and worship. You know, those songs haven't changed. It's just your heart. That's why you don't cry anymore. I remember singing those songs. I love you, Jesus, and tears streaming down my eyes. And if I'm honest, oh, man, that heart doesn't string like it used to be. And Joshua was telling the people, serve him in sincerity and truth. New Testament, go back to your first love. Go back to the, to the, to the thing when, it, when all that mattered was, was him. Nothing else mattered to you. That's all you can. I, I just want him. I, I want to serve him. Choose this day. Someone say amen. amen. I love this other thing. He said, put away foreign gods. Put away those things that take your affections from God. We have made idols in America to just, you know, the gods that you put up and built. But what about those things that just takes our affection? 
Let's think about football. Let's think about these things that just takes our affection away from God. Is it sin? No, but it, it's something that, you know, if I stay too long, I, I skip a little prayer of life. And, ah, I'd get it later. And weeks and months go by, and I realize, man, I haven't really been with him. What are those things that's really taking your affections? He say, put away those foreign gods. I've talked to the young people tonight. Look, it's, it's really simple. Jesus said, you're either with me or you're against me. It's really no in between. The devil owns the fence. So if you're in the middle, you, you know, you're not with God. It's black and it's white. And it's a generation nowadays. We, we, we're dib and dabbing in this new age and these crystals and all of these things and, and this deception. And I, I just want to present to you today, choose. Choose who you serve. I love this saying, you got to kill it before it kills you. <laughs> kill it before it kills you. One day we're going to be accountable unto him. Kill it before it kills you. The reality is, is the devil just wants us to be getting to flirt with sin. He wants us to flirt. You know, ask David, who was supposed to be in war, <laughs> who just was in the wrong place at the wrong time and looked at Bathsheba and then all oh, H-E-L-L broke loose. Ask Samson for years and years, walking in the power of God, sleeping with Deliah, and then one day, the Spirit of the Lord lift off him, and he didn't even know it. And those two were restored. Praise God for that. But think about Balaam, a man who did indeed heard from the Almighty God, heard from God, walked with God, was known as a prophet. But at the end of his life, he was word of a he was he was noticed and and known as a man who practiced divination. Think about Judas. A man who walked with God. He literally walked with Jesus himself. Flirting with the devil, but he didn't know. One day his little foxes, his little leaven would leaven the lump and he would betray the king of kings. It's just a little. I want to tell you all a story today. Do you like stories? You like stories? Let me see your hand. I can see your hand. I just want to make sure you're all awake. <laughs> Wife, are you awake? Okay, great. I always clown her. We was in Virginia one time, and I mentioned her, and I turned around, and she was like this. It's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I want to tell y'all a story about a, a, a rich man. He had a big mansion. Everyone say big mansion. And he had 10 rooms in his house. And he's sitting down, and sorry, Ryan, but he's sitting down, and he's watching Alabama beat Georgia. <laughs> and he hears a knock at his door. So this man, he's like, man, who is this knocking at my door right now? So he goes and he peeks through the window and he's like, man, who is this? The light is so, so bright. He opens the door, he peeks a little bit and it's Jesus. He said, oh, Jesus, look at you. You're shining like the sun. Oh, man, I'm so happy you're here. I heard how you give life and life abundantly. I heard how you just come to just love on people. Can you please come in my house? Be my guest. I would love to have you. Jesus said, okay, sir. He said, please come in. Jesus comes in. He says, guess what? I want you to stay in my master bedroom. He said, in the master bedroom? He said, it's the best shower. The water is hot. He said, the pillows are really, really soft. Jesus, being a gentleman, he said, okay, sir, thank you. He goes upstairs. He gets settled. The man sits back down. And moments later, he hears another knock. The man's like, oh, no. That's it. I let Jesus in, but no, no, no. That's it. It's too late. I'm watching the game. I'm chilling. No, no one can come in. But the door kept knocking. So eventually he goes and he said, man, who is this? He couldn't see. And as he opened the door just a little bit, he looked and it was the devil. He said, oh, no, devil. He said, you can't come in my house. I heard how you steal, how you kill, and how you destroy. You are not welcome here. You need to go. But as he closed the door, what he didn't realize was that opening the door just a little bit, the devil already put his toe in the door. Then he put his knee in the door. Then he put his shoulder in the door. And they began to wrestle back and forth. But he was no match for the devil. 
The devil bust through the door, tormented him all night. And then as the sun went up the next morning, the devil walked out like this. Jesus come down the stairs and a man came down. He said, Jesus, he said, surely you could have helped me last night. You didn't hear what was going on. Jesus said, sir, it was amazing. You told me the room was amazing. You were right. The water was hot. The pillows were soft. Nothing happened in the room I was in. He said, the devil came in and tormented me all night. He said, ah, man. He said, sir, I, I just want to tell you, you only gave me one room. In my room, everything was good. He said, ah, I get it. He said, I'm going to give you five rooms of the house, and I will take the other five. Jesus said, I'm a gentleman. Yes, sir, I'll take the five. Jesus goes back upstairs. The day goes on, and night comes again. He hears another knock at the door. He's like, oh, Lord. He goes to the door again, and it's the devil busted in. He torments him all night. The sun come up. He leaves out, and then the next morning comes, and Jesus comes out. And this time he said, Jesus, I gave you five rooms. The devil came back again. I know you heard it. He said, sir, in the five rooms I had, everything was amazing. He said, those rooms are just as good as the last rooms. He said, ah, oh, Jesus, I get it. He said, Jesus, I'm going to give you the whole house except one room. He said, this is the room where all my dirty laundry is. He said, I don't want you keeping up with all of these things. Jesus, you wouldn't want to touch all of my dirty drawers and all of those things. Jesus said, okay, sir. The night goes on. He hears another knock. And as he's walking to the door, the devil doesn't, he doesn't even wait. He busts through the door. He torments him all night, all over again. The sun comes up. The devil leaves out. Then Jesus comes back downstairs. But this time, the man is livid. He goes up to Jesus. He said, Jesus, what is your problem? He said, I gave you nine rooms of my house, and you haven't done nothing for me yet. The devil tormented me over and over and over and over again. I gave you nine rooms. What are you going to do? And Jesus looked at him. He said, sir, calm down, calm down. He said, but sir, I want to tell you something. He said, you only invited me in this house as a guest. And he said, as a guest... I am not liable to protect, save, or provide for anyone in here. That's your job. This is your house. He said, but I'm going to suggest something to you. He said, how about you give me the keys? You make this my house, and you come and live with me. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> the man said, okay, okay, okay. So he's so happy. He's like, woo! The night comes on and he hears another knock. And this time the man, his attitude, his demeanor is very, very different. He said, again, I gave Jesus everything. This is his house now. And I know who it is on the other side of that door. And he began to walk and he, he gets to the door and now he's so scared. He's trembling. And as he touches the doorknob, he feels a hand on his shoulder. And he looks back, and Jesus said to him, he said, this is now my house, and I open the door at my house. The man said, yes, sir, yes, sir. He backs back. He got his arms crossed like, oh, yeah. Jesus opens the door. He rips the hinges off, but he's not a punk. The devil looks and he takes a few steps back, and he was very, very, very confused. He looked at Jesus, and he said, ah. Then he looked at Jesus again, then he looked at the address, Jesus, address, Jesus, address, Jesus, address, Jesus, address, Jesus, address. He said, he took another step. Then he just got on his knees. Jesus said, what do you want, sir? He said, sir, I'm so, so sorry. He said, I got the wrong house. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you today, 90% of giving your everything that Jesus won't do. He wants 100% of every tire of your being. Oh, and if you would give him 100%, I'm telling you, he destroyed every work of the power of darkness over your life. 
Do you hear me? He, he took and disarmed every principality and power, but it's a choice you must make to say I'm giving him every single thing. I never forget when I had to make the decision. <laughs> I grew up in church a little bit. We went every now and then. I had a form of God, but definitely did not the power. Never forget it was years. My whole life I lived immorality, all of those things. I never forget. I was in a relationship with a girl. I just finished graduating like a technical college. And I found out on the day we made four years of being together, she had been with another guy. And I could not take what I always did to her. I went crazy. And everything that I already was doing went to levels that was just, it was, it was, I was going insane. But in the midst of all of those things, I started to realize that it's not getting it for me anymore. It, it really doesn't matter how much weed I smoke, my high come back down and I'm dealing back with life. It, it, it doesn't matter how many girls I'm with, I, I, have to, I don't even want to be with them. I, I need something that can satisfy my soul. And in that time, I, I never forget I'm so depressed. And like most guys, most young people, you know, I didn't really tell anyone. Tough. But I was crying myself to sleep at night. And I'll never forget, I read a book during that time called Lead for God's Sake. Perfect story for me. It was a basketball story. I like to play ball, but it's all based on Jesus. And, and it said, What's wrong with you is you're trying to do what the world tells you to do and not what you're created to do. And I said, Whoa, I'm created for something? I, I never forget, I'll be smoking and drinking, and the whole time I'm like, God, you really did create me for something. I have to know. What is it? And at that time, it wasn't even, I was praying in Jesus' name. I watched a YouTube video, and it said that if you call God Jesus, you're calling him a punk. I said, I don't want to call God a punk. So in God's name, whatever it is, amen. <laughs> but I'll never forget, in the midst of all of these things, I begin to have these dreams. And in my dreams, I was preaching, and it messed me up. I said, God, I don't care what you're doing or who you are. I would never do that. I'm not standing up in front of nobody telling anyone about no God. And the dreams kept happening over and over and over again. I'll never forget we're having a party at my house. And, and we're, we're, we're doing everything under the sun. The only thing on my mind is all of these dreams. I said, God, leave me alone. Why now? Look at me. Look, look what I'm doing. I, I lock myself in the room. And I'm like, I don't want nothing to do with this. You or any. Leave me alone. He never stopped. He never stopped pursuing after me. My mom began to send me videos. And on these videos, it was a Christian pastor. And it felt like we was on FaceTime. Though thousands of people was on this Insta Facebook Live. And I show up to his church. I'll never forget it. It wasn't even him preaching. And I was so mad. I was like, I want to hear that guy, not these other guys. And this guy was from Arkansas. I'll never forget. He steps up. He says this. He said, I'm here for three people tonight. I said, that's stupid. Hundreds of people here. <laughs> and then he said, specifically, I'm here for one young man to give his whole heart to Jesus and accept his calling in the ministry. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> he talked about every dream. He talked about every vision. And I'll never forget it was like God drew a line down the sand. And, and I was in a valley of decision. I had to choose. It, it, was, it was so clear. I knew Jesus. I knew he was the son of God. I knew he's risen from the grave. I knew he was God. And I knew one thing. I was going to have to leave some sin behind. I, I knew that, man, I know what I'm created to do. God pursued me in a way that he don't, like, it, it was different. I knew, I knew that I knew. And I said, man, you know what, God, if, if you come after me like that, if you love me like that, I'll give you everything. And my life has never been the same. I left out of that church, washed in the blood of Jesus. New desires, a new heart. I'll never forget telling my mom, I can't believe it. I'm happy. It was a moment of time. It was wild, but I'm really happy. Like, I don't even know how to explain this. I remember telling people, I don't know what to tell you, but if you just put your faith in Jesus, everything changed. I couldn't quote the scripture. 
But I knew, I said, oh, man, if you, if you can just get to this man, if you can just give him everything, he'll give you purpose in life. This Jesus, he's amazing. And I believe, like never before, he's talking to believers. He's talking to non-believers. He's talking to backsliders. And he said, you have to choose. You have to come and make a decision. Who are you going to serve? Oh, I believe it's a time when he's separating the wheat and the tares. Oh, you're going to have to choose. It's a line being drawn in the sand, and it's so clear. It's Jesus. He's amazing. When I think about him, it's just like, whoa. It's reading today, and when you look in the garden of Gethsemane, it's such an amazing picture. Just He goes in, and he brings his friends. Of course, they're asleep. But he began to pray this prayer that I begin that I believe describes his heart like nothing else. God, if this cup can pass, let it pass, but not my will, but your will be done. And what he was saying in that moment, if I, if I got to go to the cross, it doesn't matter if they're going to be set free and they can be in relationship with me and know me, I'm willing to do whatever. He leaves the garden. He goes and next thing you know, Judas comes up, betray him with a kiss. Someone who walked with him and he provided for him. He get, got betrayed by a kiss. Peter being Peter chops the ear off. Jesus picks it up, places it back. This is wild. <laughs> Jesus says something that I just watched a, um, a TikTok. They said, man, this was like, y'all talk about gangsters. Jesus was like, he did something really, really good. He said, don't, do, Peter, don't you know I can get like six legion of angels if I wanted to right now? But still in that moment, they, they bound him and took him away. He could have called angels down, but for you and I, he said, I'm willing to take whatever comes with it. They bring him in a room. They spit on his face. They slap him. They mock him. Then they tell him, prophesy. Tell us who slapped you. The Bible said he was like a lamb led to the slaughter. He said not a word. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Can you imagine those little things going into his brain? But he did it for you and I that we may have a peace of mind. They, bowed, they mocked him, all oh, hell, King Jesus, as they beat him and whipped him, skin going out of his back. And that wasn't enough. Of course, they nailed him to the cross. They came to the cross to get him. They pierced his side you know, to make sure this guy's dead. Buried him in the tomb. That wasn't enough. Hey, you know that crazy, deceiving man said before he died that he was going to rise up from the grave. Let's make sure that the grave is sealed. They sealed the stone, got guards there, but nothing stopped him from coming after you and I. He rose from the grave with all power in his hand. And he's alive today. And he's saying today, choose today who you will serve. It's, it's really one or two options. It's you choose him who come to give life and life abundantly, or you choose the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but it's up to you. It's no in-between. I heard this man of God say, every person in this world is a riding horse, and there's only two people riding you. It's either Jesus or it's the enemy. And I'm telling you, this Jesus, he loves you. He loves you. And it comes to the moment where we got to make a choice. <laughs> we got to make a choice. Are we going to continue flirting with sin? Or are we going to say, God, I'm going all in for Jesus? It comes to the point that we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice. And it's, it's not just for unbelievers, but even it comes a point of time for Christians when so much is presented towards our lives and ourselves that it seems like we come back to that same valley of decision, a crossroad. So much is going on. Temptations is coming, the enemy is flooding our minds. You should walk away, and you have to stand your ground. And said, I've made a decision to follow him. No turning back. 
No turning back. You see, young people, it's not a game. And I was going to talk to y'all. I've seen y'all the whole time. He loves you. And I really want to tell you how special you are to him. I know it's get crazy in this life. You're very misunderstood. I get it. But I'm telling you this, God loves you so much that he laid his life down for you. And it really doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter how your mom, your dad, or whoever treated you. The God who's the king of kings who laid the foundation down of the earth, he wants you to know him. And you can know him by just simply making the choice to say, I'm going to serve you. Jesus, I'm going to put my faith in you and nothing else. And I'm going to walk and follow you. And everything changes. Every single thing. Doesn't matter who we are, where we come from. Today, he's telling us, I hear clearly, for, choose this day. Right now, in this moment, in this dispensation of time, who you're going to serve. You in here who's struggling with sin, who are you going to serve? Let everyone, let's stand to our feet. Listen, I, it's really simple. Today, if you find yourself and you say, look, it's not even just a struggle. It's more of a lifestyle. I'm living in a lifestyle of sin. It's simple. Scripture says you're, you're not a child of him, but you can be tonight. And, and it's really simple. If you find yourself today and you're a believer and you say, man, it's a lot going on. God is still asking you the same question. Who will you serve? And if it's him, he will help you. If it's him, he will be with you. If it's him, he will mold and prune you. But you have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. Even right now, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you all just to begin to think even to yourself. Where am I at right now? Did I, I need to make a decision. Think about the things that's been in your heart, the things you're battling. And I want you to really just comp contemplate like in your mind, have I really made a decision? Did I choose him? Even in this moment, in the situation that I am in life, have I choose and chosen Jesus to serve for the rest of my life? Some of you right now, you might be experiencing a Job experience. You're going through so, so much. And the temptation to walk away from the faith is in your doorstep and you know it. What will be your choice? Choose this day whom you will serve. I'm telling you, Jesus is waiting with open arms and open hands. He wants to meet every need. He wants to touch your life. He wants to comfort. He longs to do it. So this is the thing. It's really simple. Today, if you say, Daryl, I need to make a decision to truly, truly follow him. It's simple. Make your way to these altars and you begin to cry out to God yourself. If you would say that you're a believer, I got some things in my life. I got some things in my life that I know is not pleasing to him. I, I've been doing a little flirting with the enemy. Go, oh, come today and make a decision. God, I'm choosing to follow you. Don't worry about who's next to you. Begin to come now. Come. Come to Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, touch our life. Touch my life. I thank you, God, just for being such a good God. 
God, mold and prune me, God. Oh, God, the things in my own heart, oh, God, that I've been flirted with, oh, God, I pray right now. Oh, God, not say in front of the world, I choose to serve you. Oh, God, do it in my heart. Oh, God, do it in my life. Don't wait on me. You begin to talk to Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else who said, I want to, I got to make a decision. I got to make a decision. I, I got to make a decision to serve him. Jesus. I want you to look to the person next to you. Ask them, do you need to be down there? I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. The times are short. The times are short. It's not time to play around. 160,000 every day. Are you right with God? If not, I'm telling you, it's one with nail-scarred hands and he's open to you. All he wants is your yes. All he wants is your yes. For every believer in this place, a fresh surrender tonight for all of us. Can we surrender afresh? Say, Jesus, have your way. Can we go into that place of that song? I'll make room for you, Jesus, to do whatever you want to do. Right now, just continue to talk to Jesus. In your own way, begin to talk to Jesus. Begin to talk to Jesus. You don't need a preacher. Talk to Jesus. Tell him, God, I'm choosing you. Talk to Jesus. I don't care if we walk with God for 20 years. Talk with Jesus. God, I'm making room for you, Jesus. God, right now in my own heart, I'm making room for you, Jesus. Come and take residence. Come and rule and reign in our hearts, O oh God. Here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. where 
Right now, as they're doing the things at the altars, just want to make one more call. If anyone else that said, I really want to make a decision to follow the Lord, is it anyone else? He's woke. Is it anyone else? He loves you and He's knocking at the door of your heart, and only you can open that door. And one more thing before I sit down if anyone in this place, I was praying this week and I was like, God, what is the thing? If anyone in this place who would just be like, hey, I feel like I'm in a, a desert place. Walking with God, but I, I haven't been in this. Pra- I feel like I, he's, he's far away. Can I please just pray for you? I want to pray for you. If that's anyone in here, can you lift your hand? Anyone in here? Is there anyone? Okay. Can you please come down, man? I just want to pray with you. That's fine. Is there anyone else? Who said, I just feel like I'm in a place where I just want to know that he's there. I want his presence. Pastor, you come and help me pray.
Break up the ground with all my religion. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to. place if you have a sickness in your body anyone have a sickness any pain in their body this is what I want you to do I want you to place the hand your hand on whatever the part of the sickness is right if it's on your head place it on your head if it's on your chest place it on your chest if it's on your knee place it on your knee if you have too many things going on just place it on your head that makes sense <laughs> I want to I want to give a time to God to move the Holy Spirit is in here and like I said, every time we're together, he wants to move. Is that fine? Okay. So really quick. So look, this is what we're going to do. I want you, as, you're, as we're going to, before we pray, I want you all to look to the healer. I'm not the healer. Pastor's not the healer. <laughs> but Jesus is. So we're going to sing a song of worship. Just really quick. The song, Hallelujah. Everybody knows it. I love it because every language is all the same. And then after it, I'm going to pray for you. Is that fine? Can you sing this? So let's lift our eyes to Jesus. Keep that hand wherever the pain is. And we're going to lift our eyes up to the healer. Wonderful, sing hallelujah one more time. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, that you are the healer. And you specialize in healing. So, God, we take authority over every sickness, every disease. And we proclaim healing over each and every body in the name of Jesus. Cancer be gone. Headaches be gone. Pain be gone. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood over every believer. Headaches, migraines be gone. Cancer be healed. 
bladder issues be gone, be healed in the name of Jesus. Bearing wounds. Oh God, I thank you that you desire fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Our chest pain, our heart pain, be gone in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's amazing. I'm like, I don't want to stop anything God is doing. You know what? Pastor, I think Pastor, can we sing hallelujah one more time? Is that fun? Let's just flow with the Holy Ghost. Is that cool? Can we flow with the Holy Spirit? Let's pray for one more thing else. And this is this time. Let's pray for a fresh feeling. You know, back in the older days, I, I watch all the revivals, the tent revivals. Man, Pentecostals was heavy on getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know, sometimes it was it got a little crazy. And sometimes it got a little bad in bad ways, but we lost the the core of who we are. And I was talking to Pastor Kane earlier, and he was talking about a lost generation that's out there that don't know Jesus. And we're, we're called to be filled that we may be a witness out there. Not just to speak in tongues, but to be a witness. And I believe God wants to fill us afresh because somebody's out there waiting to hear from Jesus. So we're going to lift our hands again and we're going to sing hallelujah because he's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, Jesus himself. And as we sing hallelujah, I'm just crazy enough to believe we're going to be filled afresh in the name of Jesus. So let's just sing. We want a fresh feeling. Hallelujah. Fresh feeling, fresh feeling. Hallelujah. Fresh feeling of the Holy Ghost. said if you ask him for a piece of fish he won't give you a stone well the earthly father so if you ask him for the holy spirit <laughs> he would indeed give you the holy spirit he he wants to fill us so even now just lift your hands and just simply you don't have to beg it's his will for you to get it <laughs> just say father fill me afresh just tell him fill me afresh oh god Oh, God, I pray right now, fresh filling of the Holy Ghost upon every life and every heart in this place. Oh, that our belly will flow nothing but rivers of living water. Oh, she baba kade de bo she. Ke de de bo bo ko ba 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 she. Oh, she ke te de 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 bo bo ko ba 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 she. Ke te de 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 bo bo ko ba ba. Oh, be filled, be filled. She ke te de 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 bo bo ko ba 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 she. Be filled, be filled. She ba 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 kare de de bo 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 she. She ba 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 kare de 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 bo bo bo. She ke te de 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 bo bo ko ba 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 she. Be filled, be filled. She ba 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 kare de 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 bo bo ko ba 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 ba. Fresh feeling. She ke de 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 bo bo ko ba ba ba. She bo bo ko te de 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 bo bo ko ba ba ba. Fresh feeling of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, she ba ba ma ka de 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 bo bo ko ba ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. youth up here for a minute. Just can. This generation has been attacked and attacked. Can we get some of our older people behind them and pray for them?
What a sweet presence. This is what this generation needs. Oh, give Daryl a hand crap, please. You did a great job. Man, he's a he's a great guy. Uh, people didn't think we'd be hanging out when we was in Bible college. You got to do from Baton Rouge from the streets, and you got a big old white honky from Northeast Texas. But when you got Jesus, there's that connection. He's my brother from another mother. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to thank y'all for coming. Uh, we're going to have s'mores, hot dogs outside, campfire, some music. Yeah. It'll be awesome. It's something this church never had, but you'll see what it is. <laughs> it's it's going to be great. Uh it's going to be awesome. But let's end in prayer. Lord, we, we thank you for this presence we felt, Lord. We thank you for chains that were broken, Lord. We thank you for the word that you sent forth. Lord, let them grow in this word, Lord. Let them go into the highways and hedges, Lord, and proclaim the gospel, Lord. Let them decide today that they will serve you for the rest of their lives. Lord, use this moment to raise them up in their life, Lord, that they will remember this, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.